One evening I was looking for an internet cafe because I needed to send a few emails. I spotted one in an old building. The sign said it was on the sixth floor. When I walked through the entrance there was a dark hallway that led to a small elevator. I pressed the call button and when the doors opened I stepped inside. In a lot of Asian countries many buildings do not have a fourth floor. The number four is considered bad luck because the word for four sounds almost the same as the word for death. The buttons in the elevator were one, two, three, five, six. I pressed the button for the sixth floor. The doors closed and the elevator quietly began to ascend. When it stopped and the doors opened, I was about to step out when I realized something was wrong. The hallway was in total darkness. By the light emanating from the elevator, I could make out random pieces of furniture covered with white cloth. It looked like it hadn't been occupied for decades. I thought I must have gotten off on the wrong floor, so I checked the buttons, but none of them were lit up. There was nothing to indicate what floor I was on. Just then I noticed something moving at the end of the darkened hallway. I couldn't quite make out what it was, but it looked like a person dressed in some type of gown. The figure was moving slowly down the hallway towards the elevator. It creeped me out, and in a panic I started pressing the closed door button. All of a sudden the light in the elevator flickered and turned off. I was plunged into pitch darkness. I was so freaked out I almost wet myself. Just as I was about to lose it, it com completely, the lights flickered and came back on. The doors closed, and the elevator jolted back to life and began to ascend again. I breathed a sigh of relief. When the doors opened this time, I was at the internet cafe. I went over to the counter and I told the girl who worked there what had happened. As she listened, her face grew pale. She said that some of the customers and a few of her co-workers had experienced something similar. She never had experienced anything herself, but she told me about the story of the building. Apparently the fourth floor had been a hair salon at one time. It was a prospering business until one of the women who worked there killed herself in the salon. Nobody knew the reason why, but she slit her wrists over a basin and bled to death. The salon continued to operate, but they were plagued by weird and inexplainable events. Sometimes when customers were having their hair washed, the water would turn red as blood. Other people claimed that when they looked in the mirror, they would catch glimpses of a ghostly figure standing behind them. When they turned around, there would be no one there. Because of these events, the salon developed a bad reputation and began to lose customers. Eventually, they were forced to close down. The building's owner tried to rent the fourth floor out to other businesses, but when they found out that someone had died there, nobody would take it. Finally, the owner reduced the price to nearly nothing and it was rented by a businessman who planned on opening a stationary supply store. However, when they tried to do some renovations on the floor, there was a series of mysterious accidents. The worksman's tools would sometimes disappear only to be found in strange places. A large mirror suddenly shattered when nobody was near it and a workman had his hand crushed when the elevator doors closed on him unexpectedly. Eventually the workmen were spooked and refused to continue and the businessman pulled out and left. The building's owner gave up trying to rent the fourth floor and just shut it down. He had the buttons in the elevator replaced and it was reprogrammed so that nobody could go to the fourth floor. At least that was what was supposed to happen. For some reason, when people took the elevator, it would sometimes stop on the fourth floor, and when the doors opened, some people would see a figure coming towards them in the darkness. About a month ago, my girlfriend and I got engaged. We moved into a new apartment and began living together. 
It was the first time either of us had shared an apartment, so it was a new experience for both of us. We were deeply in love. I knew she was the one I wanted to spend the rest of my life with, and I thought she felt the same thing about me. Everything went well until about two weeks ago, when I noticed that my girlfriend was acting very strange. She became so attached to me that it felt like she couldn't stand being away from me for a moment. One evening she said to me, Darling, when you're not home, I still feel you near me. I didn't attach much importance to these words. I thought she was just being affectionate. However, a few days later she told me something else. Whenever you're at work, she said, I often hear your voice, as if you're calling my name. This began to happen more and more as the days went by, and I started to get a little worried about her. One day, I arrived home from work. I found her sitting silently at the kitchen table, staring blankly at the wall with a glazed look in her eyes. I grabbed a chair, sat down beside her, and asked her what was the matter. I think there's something wrong with me, she murmured. Well, why do you think that, I asked. I saw you today, she said. You walked from the kitchen into the bedroom, then you stood back to me, staring out the window. But I was at work all day, I said. I know, she replied with a sigh. That's when I really began to worry. I suspected that my girlfriend was losing her mind and having hallucinations. Over the next few days she kept telling me that she saw me in the apartment when I was at work. She could even describe exactly what I was wearing. My girlfriend was acting more and more strange. She was getting more and more quiet as she was terrified of being left alone. Sometimes she would just sit there silently staring at me. Last night my girlfriend was very tired and decided to go to bed early. I held her hand and sat on the edge of the bed as she was falling asleep. Just before she nodded off she said, You're not here. Honey, I'm right here, I explained. Don't worry, everything is fine. No, you're not here, she said. You're in the kitchen. Just then I heard a dull noise coming from the kitchen. It sounded like a chair scraping across the li linoleum. Then I heard the sound of footsteps walking down the hallway. Fear gripped my heart. I didn't know what to do. All of a sudden the handle on the bedroom door began to turn and the door slowly began to open. Maybe it's just a draft, I thought as my eyes grew wide with fear. But it wasn't a draft. The door swung open, and I saw a man standing there in the doorway. It was me. It's difficult to describe exactly what I saw. It was me, but at the same time, it wasn't me. It was as if I was staring at myself in a mirror. But the other me had cold, lifeless eyes. The other me looked at me for a moment, then turned and left, shutting the door behind him. It took me a moment to recover from the shock, and then I sprang off the bed and ran after him. The hallway was empty. I checked the kitchen, then the bathroom, but he was nowhere to be found. The other me simply vanished. It was terrifying. And then I stood in the hallway, trying to figure out what had just happened, trying to calm myself down and convince myself that it was just a hallucination. I heard a faint voice coming from the kitchen. It wasn't my voice, it was the voice of my girlfriend. We are here to stay, she said. Forever. I realized my girlfriend wasn't in the kitchen. She was lying in the bedroom, exactly where I just left her seconds before. I was so frightened I started trembling like a leaf. I ran into the bedroom, grabbed my girlfriend and dragged her with me out the front door. We left the apartment that very moment and spent the night at my parents' house. Tomorrow we will go back to pick up our things. I still can't understand what happened in that apartment, but neither of us can bear to spend another night there. 
Hopefully, when we pick up our things, all will be well and no one will be there. It all began when we moved into the old house. One day, my four-year-old daughter started screaming at something she had seen in the living room. She said it was a cloud of red mist that had emerged from the corner of the room. It enveloped her and it had a horrible smell that made her sick. Then, it just disappeared. At first, we just dismissed it, but a few days later, my wife's sister came to visit and she brought her two little daughters. The little girls said they saw a cloud of red mist appear from the same corner and it enveloped them too. Later that same day, my wife saw the cloud of red mist come out of the corner and wrap itself around her. She said it felt hot and suffocating and stank of burning meat. One night, my six-year-old son heard the front door opening, so he went down to investigate. The door was open, and in the doorway he could see an odd red mist that slowly disappeared before his eyes. At this point, I was still skeptical of all these stories. That changed the night I fell asleep downstairs and had a very strange dream. In the dream, I walked into our bedroom, but it was completely different. There were no beds and it was furnished as a living room. There was a sofa and sitting on it I saw a beautiful woman with dark red hair. She was not my wife but in the dream I somehow knew she was my wife. She was crying and when she turned around to look at me her eyes were blackened and filled with tears. She had a look of fear on her face and when I moved towards her she cowered as if she was being beaten. Just then I heard a voice behind me. It was the voice of a young boy. I turned and saw a boy standing in the doorway. He was wearing red corduroy pants and a red sweater. He was soaking wet from head to toe and his skin looked ashen and lifeless. He was not my son, but in the dream I somehow knew he was my son. The boy looked up at me. Dad, he said with a look of fear in his eyes. Dad? help me. Suddenly I woke up and found myself sitting on the sofa downstairs. My wife was sitting beside me and she screamed at me. What was that? I realized there was sounds of a struggle going on upstairs. We could hear furniture being thrown at the sound and the sound of breaking glass. I jumped off the sofa and ran upstairs but when I got to the top of the stairs everything went silent. There was nobody there, nothing out of place, no sign of anything wrong. All I saw was a strange red mist in the hallway. It had an iridescent glow and gradually dissipated until it disappeared. I returned downstairs to tell my wife what I had seen. We sat there in silence unsure of what was happening and waited for the dawn to come. That morning I was standing on my front porch still trying to make sense of the dream that I had had. My son was playing in the garden and all of a sudden I heard him call out. A chill ran down my spine as I heard him say, Dad? I turned and looked down the hill. My son said, Dad, help me. I ran over to him and saw he was digging something out of the ground. It was a strip of red corduroy material. I went to help him but when I pulled the material away I saw a flash of white bone underneath. I grabbed my son and we ran into the house. We called the police and when they came they dug up the remains of a little boy. He had been buried in our garden. They said he was about six years old when he died. He was wearing red corduroy pants and a red pullover. The police are trying to locate the man who lived in the house before us. He was the father of the boy and they believe he murdered his own son. But they haven't been able to find him. They also believe he murdered his wife, but they can't find her body. They do have old pictures of her. She was a beautiful woman with dark red hair. During the summer, my friend Steve went mountain climbing. He had lost his footing and fell off the steep cliff face. Luckily, he landed on a ledge and it saved his life. However, he was badly injured and had to be rescued. He hit his head in the fall, and when they brought him to the hospital, he was still unconscious. 
The doctors examined him and found a swelling in his brain. He had to have surgery immediately. They were in the operating room for hours and they managed to reduce the swelling but he was still in a coma. A few days later he recovered and I went to visit him in the hospital. He told me that while he was unconscious he had a very very strange dream. In the dream Steve found himself standing in a deserted train station. There was nobody else in sight. When the train pulled into the station he got on board. There were no other passengers on the train. Steve was completely alone. After a long time the train started slowing down and it pulled into another station. He looked out the window and saw the platform was deserted. Just then he heard a low crackling voice over the intercom. Next stop. Final stop. Next stop. End of the line. Something about the announcement set a chill down his spine. He jumped out of his seat and managed to get off the train just as the doors were closing. That was the moment when he awoke from the coma. The doctors told him he was lucky to survive. For a while he had been lingering between life and death, they said. While Steve told me about his dream, I could see he was becoming upset and his face was growing pale. I asked him why it troubled him so much and he said, what if I hadn't got off at that train station? What would have happened if I'd stayed on the train to the end of the line? If you like what you heard, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. If you'd like to, you can follow me at Twitter. The handle is at Fuzzy Pantaloons. And I'll see you all next time.